people are scared. Okay. And sometimes they don't, they don't know what they're scared of. beautiful snowy Connecticut to visit Lorraine Warren at her home and finally get the opportunity to meet her. God bless you. It's just so wonderful. I can't believe I'm here. <laughs> Thank you. You know, I, I, there's so many questions as I've come into this house and I'm like, with, I think the one question that I would love to ask you first is, um, what was one of the most cherished memories that you have of, of Ed? For one thing, Ed did not understand my psychic ability. Did you tell him right away or how? I, I, I tried to, I tried to tell him, I even tried to tell my parents, but nobody understood me. I didn't look for it. I really didn't look for it. Um, the way, when I realized there was something about me that was different and I, I was, in, yeah, I was, at a private Catholic girl's school, and I told one of the nuns that her lights were brighter than Mother Superior. And I paid a price for that. Good, good looks like very pastel mm. colors around your aura, mm -hmm. around them. And is it always around the head area? Yes, it's okay. always around the head always area. Around the head area. And, um, but then, bad, is, bad, bad is terrible. Did you ever, did you ever say, um, I, I wish I didn't have this? No. Were no, you and just I, and grateful I, to? No, I didn't do that because that's what God wanted. Somebody told my husband that, that maybe I, I, could, I could tell them what was in that house. Mm -hmm. Now, I didn't know that I had that kind of a gift. Right. And in fact, I didn't understand my gift at all. That's got to take something out of you. Every single case, every single time that you have to deal with something like that, mm. is it, it, it has to take a toll. I it don't does. know how that. It, it does, it does take a toll. When you were at home and you, had, you, you were home and Ed said you were home for eight days, you didn't come out, you didn't talk to anybody, you didn't eat. Mm -hmm. Have you ever, have you ever told anybody what you saw that made you do that? No, I'm not going to. And I respect that. In the film The Conjuring, when I would watched it for about the third time, because it is such a wonderful film, mm -hmm. and I really got the sense that it really was a love story in many ways, but I just felt like he was very protective of you. Mm -hmm. You were uh, uh, the center of his, of his universe, mm -hmm. his family was. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Very much yes. so important. Mm -hmm. Yes, that was right. Do you, you've, you've said that this, this film, The Conjuring, was so very accurate, probably as close that anybody could get to what really happened to you and Ed and, and the Perrin family. And yeah, I, I, th I, think, I think it was very well done. Very well yes. done. Very, very well done. When I got up to the top of the stairs, there was a room there, and there was a spirit right in the corner of the room. Was that? It's very scary when when it happens to you like that. I can't even imagine. And we sat on the bed. The bed went up. Did it physically levitate? It levitated the bed. Animals obviously have the ability to sense. To sense. Now, 
with your animals, have they ever had the, an experience like that? I remember one time, I remember one time, Ed and I came back from a haunting um, in northern Connecticut. And we came in, in the house, and the animals went walk backwards. They walked backwards away from us. Lorraine Warren is my mother-in-law, and she, of course, is a psychic and a clairvoyant and a light trans medium. And she's been involved in the supernatural for, I'd say, 60 years now, maybe more than 60 years, along with her late husband, Ed Warren. And I am Tony Sfera, her son-in-law, married to Judy, her daughter. A month after we were dating, one night she says, hey, do you want to go see my parents lecture at UConn, University of Connecticut? And I said, yeah, yeah, sure. What are they, college you know, professors? So you or? hadn't met them yet? No. Wow. I said, what are they, college lecturers or professors? What are they? She said, no, they're not professors. They're, they're ghost hunters. And I said, what? She said, yeah, the Warrens, Ed Warren, Lorraine Warren, they're my parents. I wasn't like into ghost hunting at the time mm -hmm, mm -hmm. until I met Ed mm -hmm. and demonology and things like that. Until I met Ed and he told me about all the different cases he's been on and how bad they were and how ghosts do exist, that people when they die their spirit lives on and never never dies. And it was very intriguing to know that, that when you pass on from this realm that you're never going to die. And that's one thing we've learned though, that Ed learned, I learned and Lorraine knows that your spirit is never going to die, so that means you're never going to die. Just your body. That movie, The Conjuring, was made very well. James Wan took pains to make it like a real incident that happened. It's nothing that Lorraine uh, sought out or Ed sought out exactly. this movie. They came to Lorraine. Exactly. Uh, the producers came to Lorraine and said they had a treatment. One of the producers said he had a treatment for one of their cases. And when Lorraine asked what case it was, they said, you know, the bewitched farmhouse. And Ed used to always call it that, the bewitched farmhouse. And we used to do lectures years and years ago, and all the time when Ed was well, he would say to us, I'd say he said to me maybe more than half a dozen times at the end of a lecture when we're packing up our stuff, he'd say, hey, you know what would make a great movie? And I said, what? He goes, that darn bewitched farmhouse <laughs> in Rhode Island. So wow. I'd, a lot of times I'd say, which one is that? He goes, you know, the, the parent house, the one in, in Rhode Island. You know, he never, he never uh, went with it trying to get it made or anything, but a year and a half after he passed, the phone rang and it was a, a producer who wanted to do the farmhouse. Not only does it sh talk about Ed and Lorraine and, and bring them to the forefront because they were the pioneers, but it also lets people know that the demonic or the devil in exists. this movie exists. You know, people used to say to Ed Warren, oh, you're only in it to make books. You're only in it to, to, to make the limelight, to, to, to be on TV or to, or to be in the newspaper. You know what Ed used to say? You're damn right I am. He said, because now I'll do anything I can to expose the devil. The devil, that the devil exists. Absolutely. Because the biggest success that the devil ever had is convincing people that he doesn't exist. Well, the Warren's Occult Museum that's on this property uh, was founded back in 1952, the New England Society for Psychic Research. And there is an occult museum that Ed Warren used to collect these artifacts from different various cases that he was on and some are very you know bad some are evil like the annabelle doll also there's a satanic idol a satanic idol was found in the woods of newtown about 1990s early 90s but there's a myriad objects in there that have evil attached to them that were either used in satanic rituals witchcraft rituals uh, diabolical incantations and things like that or just haunted houses where people that are haunting after they purchase the object and they blame the object. Shadow Doll was bought by a couple who thought it was a, um, a Victorian doll. Um, that night they brought it into the home, both of whom had a very frightening nightmare and they had the same nightmare. And um, when they talked about it the next day, they realized something was wrong. They called Ed and Lorraine. Ed came, came down and they told him just to take it out. I'm just not going in. I'm not going to go in there. You know, now that I've lost Ed, 
Yeah. I'm not going to go in there. This is a child's tombstone. Um, satanic um, cults use steel satanic, uh, steel children's tombstones as altars for satanic rites. But the thing about this is, you see, it says warn. But here, the date of death is August 23rd. That's the day it died. There's only one answer. It's my faith. Right. That's what protects me. Amen to that. Yeah, that's what protects me, protects my pets. Because so many people say, and you've heard it a million times, why don't you destroy it? Destroy it if it's so evil. Yeah, that's true. They, a lot of people do say that to us, but you're destroying, just like I said in the movie The Conjuring, you're only destroying the vessel. When you destroy the vessel, the evil's still there, and it can just wander. We'd like to know where that evil is, so we do binding ritualistic prayers. We do binding prayers. Father Jim is binding prayers around these objects to keep, to keep the evil bound within. So we'd like to know where they are. Where it's in a museum, that's where they stay, instead of letting them loose somewhere into the atmosphere. Right. You cannot destroy them. No, it is letting them, because you don't know what. I, 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 what my, my dream, my dream, after I pass, that they are all going to the Vatican. That would be, that would be, that would be wonderful. Yes. This has been um, a dream come, come true for me. Uh, I have been speaking to Lorraine on the phone on and off for six years. She's been kind enough uh, in my quest to have questions answered in regards to the paranormal, but also because she's been, you've been, you've been quite a mentor for me, whether you know that or not. I don't think Thank I've ever you. said that to you. Thank you. I think Thank you're a mentor to a lot of people, though. Thank you, my dear.